All right, so this will be part three of the DIY ESC, and this is just mainly uh, motor testing. Uh, this time I have a 3S battery here, 11 volts. Uh, we're only going to be doing burst uh, on the ones that have propellers because they do draw a lot of amps, and unfortunately the breadboard can't take more than five for about 10 seconds. So we'll throttle it to 100%. Bring it down, and then we'll test it on the little ones. We will also uh, look at the uh, the signal. Since I have all three faces connected, those uh, green wires. So let's uh, let's test. Move this to the side. Right there. And we are going to start with this little one right here. So let me plug that in. Okay, one more. it all right so we should be able to see the amps hopefully do this and I hold it down so that's 9.48 amps this again Oof, it's noisy all right, let's try the this one right here. And again, that one can only handle about 5 amps for 10 seconds or so, higher even less time, so we can only do burst as the battery. And we will be driving this one here. Let me spin it the other way. Yep. Jesus. It hit something. Smaller number two. Now we're going to test. Uh, fortunately, for some of them, I'm not, not going to be able to rotate it because uh, it can get pretty sketchy. Uh, this thing is uh, scary, to say the least. Let's see, can I see the amps? Yeah. All right, so we're going to test this right here. This one has a lot of power, so I need to hold on to it really, really tight. Let's see which way it's going to spin. Uh, where do you go? Let's spin it the other way. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to hold it right here. I might hold it. Alright, so here goes 100%. 14 amps. And now we'll test the other one with the propeller on the other side. This guy right here.
Wait. 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 Let me look. All right. So this one, I'm gonna hold it from here. Let me move this up a little more. All right, there we go. It's 21 amps. All right, another one. Pretty sketchy. And uh, let me move this again to the other side. We are going to test this little one without a prop, so it's not going to draw a lot of amps, but we should be able to see a nice signal. That's one amp, less than one. So that's the signal. This is the other one. The other one. Right, so let's test this one here. And the wires are on the way. Right there, this guy right here. That's four, four amps without any propeller, so this thing is, this one uh, draws a lot of current. Uh, it's, it has really strong magnets, and it has a dual shaft. Fifteen amps from zero to a hundred, and then it tapers off to five. This thing is on the way. It's wired. Move this out. Make it focus up here. All right. And the last one uh, will be this one right here. Can't really see it. This one. Where is it? So it will be this one. Get this down and Move this up a little. Alright. 
that is it uh, let me just plug in the I guess the uh, this one here just to show that the controller is always on closed loop it doesn't have a start up routine and it always starts providing you have enough uh, power so let me move this this way this this way there and always starts start stop start stop you can reverse it I can reverse it while running you can spin it slow as well Just go fast. So now let me show you, I did make some changes to the code, very mild changes though, just a little bit of optimization. Um, I added, let me see. So I added this function for mapping a value uh, because I wanted to have more control over the rising and falling edges. So I have uh, different values for checking if it's high or low so if it's rising uh, here this is for rising so if the motor speed is below 150 then I want a big value because I want to make sure that it spins 100% of the time and after that then it just uh, it goes from from 1 to 320 clock cycles for checking uh, the uh, the zero crossing pin make sure that it's still at the correct setting or correct value and for falling, uh, is a big value is from one clock cycle to twelve fifty six, uh, and that one, the faster you go, the smaller the value it gets. So now the interrupts. This two, this one, this is a rising one. So now it's less code, and I'm checking this value, and it's only. Uh, calculating when the speed changes same here so this for falling and that one I also made some changes here to the commutation routine so you can see that I'm, I'm no longer doing all of this so the the less clock cycles the faster you can go uh, the reason that I decided not to do this is because this function is being called by a by a, an interrupt so is not the interrupts are not going to fire until this uh, because they're blocking uh, until the commutation routine exits so i don't care about disabling those only clear them as i need them and on the rising side i am clearing the falling side because if it's rising that means it was falling before and then i'm also when i was clearing the floating uh, output disable now i'm clearing it here on the rising is right after I enable the low side and on the falling is before I enable the high side and again on the falling I clear the rising side and now at the bottom is where I'm clearing any pending interrupts after I set uh, the new uh, output compare All right so not the output compare but the wake up with interrupt that's all there is to it. So with those changes now, uh, you know, this, uh, it always starts. Yeah, 
that is pretty crazy scary <coughs> anyways so that's all i have um i will be posting the code and the project the entire project uh just one last thing um at, there's the end of the video uh when i was showing um I was setting up the pin for reversing. I realized that the video was blocking it or one of the cameras was blocking it. So let me show you which pin I was talking about. It's loading. Okay, so I was talking about this pin it's on GPA or port A and the name is rev A so when I was adding the code at the bottom uh, this code right here this is GPA so that's the port I could have used rev pin or rev port and it wouldn't make any difference but uh, I, I am checking the pin to see if it has a value or a zero or voltage or no voltage and then changing the direction and this this is how reversing the motor works um, I am also uh, using this pin as well the LED uh, on the rising and falling interrupts right here and this is just so I can I can use the oscilloscope and uh, trigger on on that line to keep it center on the screen otherwise it just jumps all over the place and you're not able to see anything meaningful meaningful and um, uh, so what that is let me show you what that is so so that's this line here this line right here that's the, the one I'm setting on the interrupt so I can see when it's getting triggered for phase B and then when it comes down All right so you can see when it triggers going high and when it triggers going low okay that's all I have um, oh yeah I said that I was going to post the code yes I am not today uh, I want to post the whole thing I also want to include this schematic uh, this is how it's wired I also want to include this one here which is the uh, the board a PCB board I have for it uh, I have a few samples so it's been tested it works really good I want to improve on it before I post it though um, so that's the top side and once I have all of that, I'll post the entire project, including the code and the, the uh, Gerbil, Gerbil, Gerbil files. Uh, so you guys can do this if you want to. All right. Later.